Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level certification. We are in chapter five talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with our 5.1 that is test planning. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be talking about how to do test case prioritization. Prioritizing a test case is indeed one of the very critical activities to be taken as a part of the test process altogether. Writing test cases can be done in any manner, in any order, in any sequences. But when it comes to executing them, the test case needed needs to be prioritized. Now, when we talk about prioritizing a test case, it's all about making the right sequence of execution in order to adhere to those of the other specific things related to the project. For example, we talk about complexities, risk associated and many such other factors like dependencies to be removed etc need to be taken into account in order to run the tests smoothly without any kind of blockers any kind of stoppers altogether thus prioritization becomes very important to be taken into account however when it comes to writing the test cases we may not just consider everything at the very beginning because sometimes we don't have all the clarity what we may need right at the beginning of the project thus if you have already requirements prioritized, you can take that also into account in order to prioritize your test cases or write test cases early for that. But when certain things do not exist, like a requirement prioritization may not have been done, then test case writing can happen in any order. And later we may sit down together to take multiple factors into account, like the criticality, the complexity or the risk factor as well, and then determine the right sequence of execution. Executing high priority test cases first always gives us a confirmation that the critical items are dealt with and all remaining test cases are now something which are non-critical. However, sometime we run out of time, then running those critical and risk area related test cases first would certainly save your day. Now let's exactly understand what are the different ways by which we can prioritize the test cases. And at the same time, we'll also be looking at what exactly is the way to understand a test execution schedule. So when we talk about the prioritization methods, of course, once the test cases and the test procedures are specified and assembled into the test suites, these test suites can be arranged in a test execution schedule that defines the order in which they are supposed to be run. When prioritizing the test cases, different factors can be taken into account. And that's what the factors we are talking about in the options below. The most commonly used test case prioritization strategies are as follows. Number one, we have the risk-based prioritization where the order of the test execution is based on the results of the risk analysis. Test case coverage, the most important risks are executed first. So in simple words, risk is taken as one of the key factors in order to perform the executions. And thus, based on the criticality and the level of risk, we determine which test case is to be executed first. However, we always try to run the highest priority risk related test first, then the medium, then the low. So that's a very common procedure. Indeed, one of the common practice which we follow in any of the organizations today that when we conduct risk analysis, we just use it as a part of the prioritization of the test cases as well. Another factor to consider here is the coverage based on prioritization, the coverage based prioritization where the order of the test execution is based on the coverage, including examples like statement coverage, decision coverage, etc. Test cases achieving the highest coverage are executed first. In another variant called as additional coverage prioritization, the test case achieving the highest coverage is executed first. Each subsequent test case is the one that achieves the highest additional coverage. So point being made here is, if in case your project does not talk about risk analysis, then the alternative is coverage driven uh, prioritization where we pick up those test cases which has the number of coverage or amount of coverage higher on the given requirement. For example, sometime a single test, like given that you have covered chapter four now, you know that sometime one test is enough to cover all the statements in a given code, right? And that one test covers 100% of statement. 
So sometimes one test may cover 50%, another test may cover only 20%, and another one test will cover remaining 30%. Then additional coverage measurement certainly talks about first I'll run the test which covers the 50% coverage, then I'll run the second one which covers the 30% and then I'll run the third one which covers the 20%. So put together the coverage based prioritization certainly means the test cases which have the highest coverage on a given requirement or on a given particular code, we run them first and that's what another method of prioritization would be. The third option here is certainly the requirement based prioritization where the order of the test execution is based on the priorities of the requirement traced back to the corresponding test cases. Requirement priorities are defined by the stakeholders. Test cases related to most important requirements are executed first. I think we were just talking about a moment ago that requirement priority can also be seen as one of the method to prioritize your test cases. Thus, the highest priority requirement related test cases will be prioritized highest and will be executed first, then the medium priority requirement, then the low priority requirements. So put together, these are three different ways by which I can go ahead and prioritize my test cases and put them into a stacked table called as test execution schedule and then define the final order of execution. Also to add here, uh, ideally the test cases would be ordered to run based on their priority levels using, for example, one of the above mentioned prioritization strategies However, this practice may not work if the test cases or features being tested have dependencies. Now, if a test case with a higher priority is dependent on a test case with lower priority, then lower priority test case must be executed first. So, of course, for this particular statement, we have a separate slide altogether we'll be talking about in a moment. But on a very high level, dependencies are something which are also seen as blockers. So maybe one test is blocking another test, then the blocking test should be executed first than the other one. And in this case, the priority does not really make sense because the blocker has to be removed in order to run the highest priority. However, there is a complete approach to understand how to blend the priority, the dependencies all together to finally define the right order of execution. And that's what we'll be looking at next. So to talk about the dependencies and risk factors, etc., and priority together to actually understand the test execution schedule, let's take some quick example to understand it. So right here on my screen, we have a small table, which is very, very hypothetical. I'm not taking any kind of technical constraints, any kind of features, any kind of criticality into account. I'm just creating a dummy data to help you understand that what the test execution schedule may look like and based on that, how to define the order of execution. So let's read the data first. The table certainly contains four columns. We have test case ID. We have the defined priority for it. And then we have something called as technical dependency and logical dependency. In simple words, technical dependencies are those where the elements are technically dependent on each other. For example, I cannot log in without signing up on a particular application. So I have to be a registered user in order to log in. So I will try to execute uh, sign up uh, first, then log in. And logical dependency, for instance, could be uh, related to test execution order itself. For example, I run the valid test cases first compared to that of invalid test cases. So if my valid test passes, then the invalid test to be executed. And that can be referred to as logical dependency. But I'm not using these examples in my data right here. The data is very, very hypothetical. So do not correlate that, okay, this test belongs to sign up or login or positive or negative. So please ignore all that. So here we have got four tests. T1 is high priority, T2 is medium, T3 is high, T4 is low. You may ask me a question that why didn't I sort it? No. Test cases can be written in any order. So we have just sorted it by the test case ID so that we don't lose any particular test. However, the priorities may be defined later. As you all understand, writing test cases is one step. Prioritizing test cases is another step, right? So prioritization may be done at a later point of time. Then we identified that T1 and T3 are high priority and T2 is medium, T4 is low. Also, if you notice uh, at this point, if I just consider only the priority, the order of execution would be T1, then T3, then T2, then T4. And I'm sure pretty much everyone would agree to that. But also to hi highlight here that it can also be executed in this manner, that is T3, T1, T2, T4. Why? Because T1 and T3 are both on the same priority level. Thus, there is no difference which one gets executed first. Point being made here is that order of execution, that is, 
priority driven is what we have to take care of. The order of writing the test cases does not make a difference. Someone has to be below another, right? So in that context, it has to be defined in any order, but when it comes to priority, I can run both are on high priority, so I can run them in any order. So T3, T1, then we have T2 and T4 if I just consider only the priority. But if I take the next constraint that is technical dependency, I see that T1 is dependent on T2. That means no matter T2 is medium, it has to be executed before T1 in order to release the dependency. So in that context, if I look into account, the, considering the priority and technical dependency both, the order of execution will be T3, T2, T1, T4. Many of you would have thought like we can run T2 first, then T1, then T3. But for your kind information, another important aspect of test execution schedule is that if you have a highly independent test, I repeat, highly independent test, then that can be executed before removing the dependency of other high test cases. Because see, it's always important to understand that what is more ind independent and high priority. Thus, T3 is completely independent and even at high priority, thus it can be executed before T1. So that's the reason the execution order reads like T3, so high, then T2, then T1, and then T4. Okay, so always remember, we should run high independent, then high dependent, and same way medium independent, medium dependent, and then low independent and low dependent. So that's the order of execution. Now taking logical dependency also into account, we have T3 also being dependent on T2, that means both the high level test or high priority test are dependent on T2 now. Now in that context, considering the entire table together, that is priority, technical and logical dependency, the order of final order of execution will be T2, T1, T3, T4 or T2, T3, T1, T4. See, T2 is a blocker for both the high dependent test, right? Then if I run T2, both become independent. Then again, the order of T1 and T3 does not matter. I can run them in any of the order. So either T3 first, then T1, or T1 first, and then T3. So put together, that's the whole context of what exactly test execution schedule is. I hope you have got the understanding of it. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.